Can airport communities and airport community collaboration eliminate weak links and resort in a more efficient fresh corridor with digitization as an ultra enabler? So a whole long sentence, but there is a few things in there and we'll get to them. Panel. So first of all, and we'll start here on my left, Mathieu, can you quickly or briefly introduce yourself. Yes, I can. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Mathieu Serafimov. As uh, already explained, I'm the station manager of uh, Avia Partner Cargo Brussels. I had the luck in the past to uh, grow up throughout operations, so I've seen a lot of hiccups, operational issues, and ticks which might go better. Um, after a couple of years, I have the luck to be in the position to uh, do something about it. So take this experience and take it up with airport, other stakeholders to see what we can do about it and how we can ameliorate things. So um, yeah, that's uh, the brief introduction. Thank I'll you, hand it over to my colleague. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Rachel Ndegwa, CEO of Swissport Kenya. I represent Swissport here in Kenya, where we have both the ground handling as well as the cargo business. Uh, Swissport being a global company, ours is to bring the global experience and localize it into the Kenyan space. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon. Chagema Kedera is my name. I am the program coordinator for the Next Kenya program being implemented by Collier CP and funded by the European Union. I think the topic we are discussing is good because it is always taken for granted. If the stakeholders work together in an airport, it makes a lot of sense. My first interactions with the airport at JKIA was when I was the MD Kefis. It was impossible to communicate with the Kenya Airport Authority. And I'm glad to listen to Jacob today talking about what they have done, the community of practice that has been put in place. And therefore, if you go through digitization and ensure that the stakeholders along the value chain understand what they need to do, when they need to do it, and how they need to do it, you eliminate a lot of problems. Thank you. Hello. Good morning. My name is uh, Benny Smets. Uh, I am chairman of transport company Nina Trans. We are based in Belgium. We have branches also in Germany, Holland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, and France. A fleet of about 300 trucks, and we travel goods, uh, transport goods throughout Europe. Different branches, um, which are, for example, pharma logistics, uh, distribution, beverages, but also a very important part of our focus is uh, on the transport of perishables. Next to my daily job as uh, CEO of NIA Trans, I'm also chairman of the Belgian Transport Federation. All right, thank you for that introduction. Um, let's dive right into it. We um, talked and mentioned a few times the, the, the whole chain from farm to fork, or in, I think today to vase uh, instead of fork. How would you describe your role, uh, not only personally, but also as your company, your role within that ch chain and what value do you think you can bring or are already bringing to that? I'll start off. Um, well, first of all, as being Avia Partner Cargo, we're a regional player, we're not a multinational. So the big advantage is that we can look into sort of tailor-made solutions. Um, and that's, I guess, our strength, uh, which we are trying to show Europe and the rest of the world. That's one of the reasons why we're here today. Our role um, is maybe looking into the entire supply chain, uh, a smaller piece. Um, but if it goes wrong, it can take a lot of your time. And, and in favor, not in favor, let's say, of the, the quality of the product itself, especially if we are looking into flowers and perishables, uh, but also into the, the, sh the shelf life of, of the product itself. So um, Seeing our smaller role, it's very important that um, all these small steps that we need to take um, throughout the process, meaning from offloading the aircraft to load it into the trucks, plus all documentation that goes around, um, that it goes in a very fluent and efficient way. So um, we have a big responsibility, I guess, um, in the chain. Um, and we need to, and that's what we have been doing the past couple of years, listening to uh, what you as shippers want from us and what we can improve in order to make sure that we can eliminate and remove all elements which 
can be in, in, in disadvantage of the fluent handling which is uh, which the perishable and flower product is demanding. So all right, thank you, Mathieu. And and of course you all or Avia Partner is already a se the second step in uh, the process or the second handling step. We also have the the first step with us, Rachel. How do you see yourself within that chain? Do you agree with Mathieu, or do you see yourselves a little bit different? Because it's um, I do agree with him, and from our space, which is the handling. Um, if I was to break it down, I think for us it's quite important on how then we do the handling of the flowers because the farmers have entrusted us with the, flam with the, farm with the flowers or the perishables to make sure that how they are handled at the airports is within the um, cold chain. I think it has to be top notch. So from our side, uh, they said if I was to break it down from the acceptance process, that needs to be done in what environment, how are we accepting this? And um, just to uh, give you an idea, it has to be done in an amb ambient environment. So we have to invest in facilities. We have to invest in warehouses that enable us to be able to do the acceptance in that optimum um, space. And even the build-up, the technique of the build-up of that cargo, the warehouse, that's also quite important. Um, how are we building it up? What technique are we using? Are we, are we allowing air to circulate? Because then if that is not happening, the temperatures escalate. So that's quite important. So that's the understanding of the how. And the storage, once you're done with the build-up, how are we storing these flowers at the, um, at the airport? Because then that needs to be done at temperatures. Um, it depends on the flowers, but on generally, uh, between two and four. So are we storing this in the right ambient? So that's quite important. And um, the towing of cargo as well. So we have to get the um, flowers, for example, out of the warehouse into the aircraft and the loading as well. How are we doing this? So that's, I think when you think about it, um, it might sound very basic, but um, every step counts. If we drop the ball, it has a ripple effect on the um, shelf life of the flowers. So for us, it's quite important. And um, maybe allow me to just speak about a project that we have been uh, piloting here in Kenya. And this came out of talking with one of the farmers here in Kenya, has farms in Kenya as well as Ethiopia and Colombia. And just discussion and seeing what can we do better around that space. And we have a flower corridor that we have been piloting here in Kenya, at Swissport Kenya. And these are flowers destined to Amsterdam. The whole idea is also to roll out to other hubs, uh, Frankfurt, uh, Liege, Brussels. So um, the idea is from the farm, we track, monitor the temperatures. The forwarder is involved, as well as ourselves. The airline is involved as well. And also the agent on the other side. So door to door, making sure that the temperatures are well maintained. Um, very interesting and, and allow me to, to, to pick out one thing and, and to summarize especially the last bit is it's, you're already doing a lot of collaboration and you, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very important and I think like collaboration, um, Dr. Gadara, you can obviously add to that because that's all what you do with Kolease Bay is bringing everybody together and collaborate. Do you think that you maybe see a role to also add to that, or is there still something that you're uh, doing, or is there already something that you're doing now that you would say like, okay, this actually fits perfectly in there, or something that you're still m missing? I think we always uh, learn something, and you need to be open to ideas that are out there. Uh, Kolease Bay is an association that brings together exporters from the ACP countries, and importers in Europe. And therefore, we have to look at the entirety of any value chain. Whether you're talking from production, you go to processing, shipping, market and market compliance requirements. Those have to work together. If you have stakeholders in the value chain who do not understand and appreciate what is happening with shipping, then you'll have a problem because you'll create a bottleneck. So if you're going to get into production, you need to know what is going to be 
the stakeholders you need to engage with upstream. And if you are in shipping, you need to understand the product I am handling, what does it require? And that's precisely what they are stating in terms of understanding what do I need to do. Now, we also need to go a little bit further. After understanding what do you do, because what I know, if it remains in my head and I do not communicate, it means nothing. It has no value. So do we really communicate or do we talk about what we are doing? And is what we are talking about implementable? And then you've also got to look at the capacities that do exist among the stakeholders in this entire value chain. There are those who understand and there are those who are getting in with limited understanding. What do you do to enhance their efficiency in utilizing what you've done? And of course, we say the digital system is good. It will help do the things. But we also need to look at how does it get adopted by every stakeholder in the value chain. Thank you. I think those are, are very valuable words. Um, and of course, if we talk about the whole chain, and sometimes it's maybe forgotten, but I think it's, it's an, a crucial link. Uh, Benny, as transport company, how do you see your role in that chain, and do you also agree with the fact that collaboration and first they can solve a lot of things, and also the upstream engagement from, from that there's also a responsibility to the shipper? Yes, that's true. Let's, like a road transport company, we realize we only play a small role in the process, but I do believe it's a very important role. We make sure that once that the flowers are uh, landed at the airport and then processed that we transport them as quickly as possible and not only as quickly as possible but in the best conditions to the flower markets and to the destinations. And like I said, this is a very big responsibility because we need to be there on time at the flower markets, we, we need to know uh, what we can do and also have to make sure that all the efforts that have been made from uh, from the farming until there, that we uh, make sure that all the conditions are as required with regards to temperature and uh, also in timing. So it's important to know that for this, we find ourselves a very small part of this uh, logistic chain, but that's done in the most um, um, efficient way. And what is efficient for us is, like I said, is also one element, and it has been mentioned already some times here, and I do confirm that it's important, is the visibility element. The visibility where we can make sure that we also uh, are very open on communication, where is a truck, and of course all our trucks are have tracing possibilities, but not only the, the location, but also temperature, so that also our customers know exactly what temperature was, uh, what the, the flow that going into the truck and coming out of the truck, so that we guarantee that uh, we can also have this quality element there. Another element there is also to do it in the most efficient way. Therefore, we're also looking at uh, new ways to make this road transport as efficient as possible. One thing is that in, uh, in the western part of Europe, distances are small. Like we know that for example, delivering flowers to uh, to UK can go sometimes even quick, in a quicker way if they are delivered in Brussels and then transported by road to the UK than, than they're, if they're flown in directly to the UK. That's an example. Second thing is also is uh, you, in a truck we can have four plates of, of, uh, of, of, of airflay pellets or uh, what we are looking for also is a way to transport more goods in one movement. So we are now uh, investing also for uh, transport from Brussels to Amsterdam in uh, eco combi trucks. These trucks are about 50% longer than a standard truck. So instead of uh, we can transport 50% more goods in one movement. That's uh, this way we can not only. Um, address the problem of the driver shortage. This is a specific uh, problem, not only in Europe, but worldwide. But also, by transporting more goods in one movement, we contribute to the sustainability, because this one truck is not consuming more, uh, more diesel than, than a standard truck. So these elements always looking for new solutions 
to optimize transport are very important. And like I said, visibility is the main element and also IT is something where we want to invest and where we have invested and made also the difference in the past with regards to uh, making a difference with the standard transport company. All right. Benny, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I think you touched on a few things and you also actually made a perfect bridge for me to one of the next questions I wanted to ask. You talked about efficiency, about transparency. We already talked about collaboration. And actually that all ties in perfectly with something that is, I hope, for, uh, for everybody here, all right now very dear to their heart and that's the sustainability factor because we often look into very complicated ways to, to add to uh, the sustainability topic but actually preventing uh, a few things like and, and for example waste and uh, untransparent processes and non-collaboration can already add to that. Um, so Mathieu if you Look at Avia Partner. Is there something that you're, okay, this are we, is, is something that we're already doing on the topic and maybe also things that you see, oh, this is something that we could do more and especially with what you heard right now. Thank you, Sam. Let me take the opportunity to split your question in two parts. First of all, we have um, the processes part, um, where we have a lot, where we had a lot of waste, let's say. Um, Especially the relation with the, the feed agency in, in, in Belgium was a difficult one um, as they were directly dealing with forwarders and um, the final, well, consignees of, of the shipments itself. So we were a bit missing in, in the entire communication, supply chain and so on. So uh, with the perishable management app, of course, we will try and we are working uh, currently to, um, well, create more transparency even for us because um, we don't want to be in the role uh, to be put aside and just inform final consignees that their shipment is blocked and that we can't do anything about it. We want to facilitate a little bit more. So um, with this additional data, additional transparency, with um, a lot of additional timestamps throughout our process, um, we will get there and especially for us, Things will get easier. Um, we always have yeah, a bad feeling when a shipment is blocked and especially, for example, due to something documentary, which is not okay. And it can even be a small statement on, on the phytosanitary uh, document. Um, so we're trying to, to add our cooperation and, and uh, toward the market and as the product itself is demanding it, um, yeah, to, to get it better and to remove the waste and the uh, unfortunate time which can be lost throughout the process. Uh, as explained, we have uh, a small part in the supply chain, um, but especially we need to be add-on and on the spot if, if things go wrong and if we can play our role to contribute to shippers um, to solve it and, and to release the shipments as quickly as possible. So that's for um, the processes part. Um, purely looking into sustainability, that's something else. Um, well, luckily, Brussels Airport is helping us over there because uh, in a couple of years, we will be obliged to go greener, um, which is a good thing, according to my opinion. Um, of course, well, we have waste charters agreed uh, in Brussels, which is a very good initiative. Um, and for us internally, the, the major legislation which is involved is the ISO 14001. Um, we're complying to that because, yeah, this legislation is changing. Um, it's obliging us to be uh, more sustainable, um, especially they're coming over to, to perform checks uh, about how we deal with waste management. We need to uh, file the figures. We need to show off that um, things are decreasing or waste, the amount of waste is decreasing year by year. Um, we also have some beautiful uh, initiatives with our uh, customers, for example, uh, like we try to um, switch over from wooden beams that we use for spreading purposes on ULDs um, to, to switch it to carton beams, for example. Um, this is a project was very hard in the beginning, but it starts to show off some uh, yeah, good results. More and more airlines are 
proactively coming to us and asking about our solution that we can provide to them in terms of uh, sustainability. Uh, that's a good thing. And of course, which is uh, logic uh, on terms of GSC, which we have uh, quite intensively, uh, we're making the shift over there as well. So uh, we to electric equipment, you mean? Then? Exactly. Um, so an example is, for example, we have uh, now some stairs on solar panels. Uh, we have our tractors, we, which will be changed into electronic uh, vehicles. That's uh, a change which is ongoing right now, um, as well as in warehouses and so on. We try to uh, really look into energy, uh, especially we have perishable infrastructure and pharmaceutical infrastructure, which are yeah uh, costing these days, uh, seeing the crisis, uh, a lot of ele electricity related costs as well as water. So we try to be more creative and, and more um, working in regards to the product, and if we need it less, that we can make some savings over there as well. So it's playing in, 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 in different fields. Um, we're trying to um, invest in all of them, and then um, by some support of some community stakeholders, yeah, I think in the next five to 10 years, we can take some considerable steps. All right, and Rachel, does this sound familiar to you as a, a ground handling agent at the other side, or you're also doing similar projects? Maybe something that Matthias can, can learn from, from you guys? I think more or less the same, but just for me to expound on the efficiency side of it, we must appreciate um, where we are coming from in the, the um, handling space. Very manual process, a lot of paperwork, and one of the initiatives that we have undertaken is to uh, implement mobile apps in our, our warehouse. And that cuts across the Swiss port warehouses, which are about 100 worldwide. So here in Nairobi, I'm happy to say that we already do that. Uh, we use mobile apps instead of the paperwork that we did have um, four or five years back. And that in itself, um, from a sustainability and efficiency bit of it, because now you have the information, you're able to share the information as fast as you can. Um, from, um, I think the other initiative we did talk about, and more or less tied um, to the flowers, um, speaker this morning did talk about diesel and the effect that it would have on the flowers. And yes, that's something that we have also taken into account. Um, we are CIV IATA Fresh Certified, and one of the requirements is that in the warehouse, we have to have only electrical equipment. So we do have electrical equipment, 100%, at our warehouse. And as you can see, it has an impact on the, the flowers, how we handle the flowers. Um, again, he talked about a few other initiatives. We also do have the same, um, still uh, from... Um, in terms of the warehouse, uh, the roof of our warehouse, we have solar panels. Uh, again, 30% of our power is from solar, and that's really geared towards running our cold rooms. So at least then you're able to keep the temperatures um, in um, the right uh, condition, or the right temperature um, numbers. And um, that in itself, I think if you look at it, if you're using solar to run your 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 cold rooms brings in a bit of cost effectiveness as well. Um, and that's something that we're also rolling out to other warehouses within our network. Um, so this, the whole agenda around sustainability comes from the top. It's driven by Swissport International, cascaded to um, all the um, Swissport stations. And uh, I must say, we are very, very deliberate around it in terms of you have um, somebody, a whole team taking care of this particular topic, just to make sure that we're not just talking about it, but we're walking the talk. Thank you. All right, thank you. Maybe I have one question, uh, sorry, one follow-up question for that. Do you still, or are you already doing that at Swissport? Um, do you still see improvement to work closer together with, with the shippers and their trucking companies to streamline the delivery process to your warehouses? Because of course, it's one thing that um, Swissport has all electric equipment and tries to minimize their footprint as much as possible. But in the end, if a truck has to idle for five hours, that will also consume diesel, that will also has an impact. Is that something that you're also working on right now? 
Absolutely. I think the topic um, and the buzzword is collaboration. Uh, we have to work together with all the, the, the industry players, everybody around the supply chain. And yes, we are doing that. And uh, a way of supporting the, um, the shippers as well is how fast do we ensure that the acceptance process, uh, how, we, how are we supporting them? But they're not at the airport for five hours. Yes, they, that's the number that you gave. But for us, yeah. I think um, we have to look into that. And one of the things that we've done is to um, automate that whole process, the acceptance process. We have implemented, in, and it's still going on, the cargo kiosks, such that um, the shippers can actually do part of the process rather than keeping them waiting. And that in itself has an impact on how long they would be waiting. I hope that answers your question. That, that answers it completely. Thank you for that. Um, and let me circle back to a question for Dr. Kedera. Uh, something you said earlier, and I think it's, 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 it's very, a very strong message and that there is also a responsibility with the shippers and with the growers and with the exporters to also be aware of the process that comes after them. Um, do you think there is something that we can do as, as, not all of us in this room, but like as logistics providers, either as handling agents, airlines, airports, truckers, anybody in that process that we can work together better, understand each other better? Is there something that you say like, okay, this would be an ID or um, something that we can support? Yes, I think this forum is one, one starting point. Uh, <laughs> by calling us all here to really share ideas on what is happening is a good starting point. Uh, the second point you need to be looking at is um, uh, who are the, you know, the, those of us who are in this meeting, yes, we've been talking, but there is more behind us in terms of the people who get involved. How do you get involved? Maybe approaching it value chain by value chain would be the best way to go. The information that is available, when you say you are exporting rosas, what does it mean uh, to the grower? What does it mean to the trucker? What does it mean uh, to the person who is actually working in the, uh, in the, in the parking house? Uh, because sometimes um, we talk about certain things but it's understood by me, but not by the people who are actually doing the work. And it actually ends up amounting to uh, nothing. I think you've been told about an example of uh, giving instructions. You give instructions, Sam is misbehaving, he needs to be disciplined. But the person listening to it thinks you said, Sam is misbehaving, he needs to be sucked. Is the message the same? Don't tell that it is to not. Boss. And, 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 and this is what we always end up with in terms of the interpretation of what is meant at the top. What does it mean at the bottom? When you talk about a sustainable environment, when you talk about SDGs, what do they mean to the people in the value chain? Is it just reducing the use of diesel? Or even at the individual level, how you work with the various tools that you use? How consistent are you? Uh, for Collier CP, we work with various uh, groups, and one of the things that we require is any group we work with, they must sign a sustainability charter, looking at energy, you t you're looking at the environment, looking at water, a whole host of things that they need to be looking at in order to be effective and contribute to what happens at the end. So we've got all that chain that we need to be looking at. Now, it is not going to be a one-day event. Uh, like we always say, uh, Nairobi was not built in a day. It is a process, it has to start somewhere. Somebody has to be willing to be the champion of the process in order to get the message across. The bigger challenge we always have is um, uh, short memory. Uh, we've been told SMS, short memory service. That means we talk about it, we are very serious today, but tomorrow ask and nobody remembers what exactly was said and who was supposed to do it and whether there is any feedback. And that is the biggest challenge we have said that we are permanently reinventing the wheel. Thank you. That, there are some, um, some wise words. I noted a few down. <laughs> Benny, is there anything you can or would like to add from your 30 year experience in trucking and, and even a longer career than that? I think there, you've seen a lot, so. Well, it's, it's true that uh, the, we are in a phase that the world is changing rapidly. 
and it is due to uh, external elements like we just uh, passed COVID and now we have the war in Ukraine, so we have to be very flexible and be, uh, where before we made strategies for the next 30 years, today we make a strategy for the next month. But apart from that, we also realize we have a responsibility towards uh, how do we make things as efficient as possible. And one element for that is also our contribution, contribution to the sustainability. And also in Belgium or in Europe, 99% um, of the trucks are, are running on diesel. We know that on the long term we are, have to look for alternatives. And at Dinatrans, we are doing that already now. We are doing tests with electrical trucks. We already have invested in hydrogen trucks, but we know that those will only be delivered on the longer term. And also to be able today to make our contribution, contribution what we do today is we transport goods with uh, gas trucks. So these gas trucks are it's liquid natural gas. And we now deliver them also. We deliver the service that we use biogas, so which is gas out of fermentation. And with those transports, like I said, we're only a small part of the total chain, but we are able to do it at 80% less CO2 than before than with the standard uh, diesel truck. And we have to continue to look together where we can find solutions to optimize, to digitize, and to uh, contribute to this system, sustainability. Okay, thank you, Benny. Um, we still have a little bit of time, but uh, although we are already learning late, and I want to open it up to the, the audience. Are there some questions? Are there things you agree with? Please say so. But more, if there are things you don't agree with, please also say so. Thank you very much, our panelists. I think you're discussing a very important topic about collaboration in order to maintain cool chain and ensure our flowers reach destination in the right quality. Uh, Back at home here in Nairobi, I think there's more that we need to do, especially in terms of collaboration. The warehouses where Rachel sits might be doing a very great job. The forwarders might be doing a very good job in their facilities. But how do we manage the journey from the forwarders warehouse to the ground handling warehouse? There's a journey there. And uh, mostly these flowers come during the day when it's a little bit hot, temperature. So we need to work together. I think, I think one point came from uh, the panelist, the third panelist from uh, uh, the second one, uh, that uh, we, re we really need to collaborate and somebody needs to take the champion. At JKIA, we have already an airport uh, operations committee. I think we need to loop in all the key stakeholders and put our minds together in order to work together and, uh, and drive towards having very, very seamless service and maintaining the cool chain. There's another aspect whereby uh, from the warehouses to the aircraft, where the aircraft are parked, it's three kilometers away. Uh, maybe to Rachel, uh, what are we really doing in terms of investing in cool chain trucks? especially for flights that depart during the day, so that we maintain that cool chain. For the aircrafts, we, 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 we regulate temperatures to very low temperatures, but I think there are gaps and we can even do more. Thank you. Rachel, you want to take that question? Thank you very much, Nicolas. I think very good um, comments around how do we deal with the gap from the forwarders to the warehouse. And I think it still comes back to the discussion that we are having. Yes, you've rightfully said that we have an operational committee. But what we need to have is a vibrant air uh, cargo community that will be able to address this. And I'm happy to see Brussels here. We can, you can share with us. I think even the presentation was a fantastic. I think something that we can borrow. You know, learn from others who are ahead of us and see what else can we do, how can we do it to make our product, to make sure that at the end of the day, everyone along the, along the supply chain is compliant. So I think for me, it still goes back to the airport uh, cargo community. 
cargo community. Uh, and I say cargo community because that should include the farmer, it should include the person who also does the transportation from the farm into the airport, it should include the shippers, everybody, everyone. So that for me is a starting point. The second point that you did um, uh, raise, uh, Nicholas, it's around how then do we address um, the um, towing of cargo during the day where the temperatures are 25 and you, um, you need, uh, maybe you have to tow it about three kilometers and still goes back to lobbying. And this is where the airport, uh, airport comes in. We have to have, and we are having, already having the conversation with the airport because it's important on where, where is the aircraft parked. If it's parked at, uh, next to the warehouse, that will not be an issue. And we have aprons right next to the warehouse. And I did hear uh, Kenya Airports Authority talk about investing in the car cargo aprons. And probably that in itself will be able to address the issue that we don't have to tow the cargo three kilometers. Uh, all you need to do is in the, car the aircraft needs to be parked outside the warehouse. But again, also there's a part of the process, the process bit of it as well. Um, how are we loading the cargo? Um, especially the flowers, the perishables. Do we get all the cargo out of the warehouse in, um, to the apron for two hours? Or are we doing the manifest loading? So you load only as and when is required. So it's a process, it's a discussion that also entails both the airport, because they need to support on where the aircraft is parked, but also the airline as well, because it's a process. It's a process where they say, what's the, what's the standard operating procedure? So it's a conversation that needs to be held. I actually love both answers. I hope they, they answer your question uh, a little bit. And let me pick in on that, because you said two very important things, and it was like you could read off my paper. There was, I was writing some stuff down during the question. I think, first of all, Often we look at issues and we think, okay, we need a solution for the issue, the specific issue. But actually, as you said, a lot can be solved but by just collaborating and changing the process. Because now we're trying to adapt to the process that is already there, but we forget. And um, I think it's sometimes said that you forget as when you grow out of being a child, you forget to question things. And sometimes we forget to question what we are doing and we're just looking at solutions. And here, I think collaboration and just looking at the issue all together and see like, oh, but we're doing this because of this reason. Ah, we didn't know that maybe we can change it and then it can. And that brings me to the, 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 the first thing you said. And I think there you have our full support from Brussels Airport. In that sense, I mentioned it briefly that we have uh, Air Cargo Belgium, our community uh, collaboration. It's over 160 companies at Brussels Airport, either directly at the airport or in the vicinity, but that have a, has a li or they have a link with the airport. I have two of our members with us, both Nina Trans and, and Anavia partner are a supporting member to all the working groups, steering groups, and actually all we've learned there, we gladly would share with you to maybe start up your own Air Cargo Kenya and work together all as one because that can yeah, solve a lot of issues that we think are issues, but it's actually just a matter of collaborating better. And please. No, I, I just wanted to add one point. You can collaborate, you can cooperate, but unless you take ownership of what it is that you want to do, you'll achieve nothing. And this is a tendency with us Kenyans. You would like to find, leave always somebody to blame. So. I would encourage, as you form the collaboration, cooperation, you really also need to take ownership. When things don't work, you say, yes, even I, us, we failed. But not share, take the blame when things go wrong. So I would like to add the term ownership to the process, because that is what will build us. Very strong addition. Good afternoon. My name is Paul Mothanga from Fresh Produce Export Association of Kenya. And we have a very important topic you're talking about today of collaboration. And uh, my question to the panelists would be, how do they assure growers that the flowers by sea, they are going to get to the market in time? And I'm referencing to a situation where 
you have done everything and all the value chain players have done everything but again you find your flowers in the market uh, on 14th of February and when people are supposed to have bought the flowers. So who takes the blame here and, and, and how do we assure that people need to really move from the air freight which is very swift to sea freight especially for such occasions. Thank you. I, I think it's a very interesting question. I don't know if it's the right panel to uh, <laughs> ask this question to, uh, because they will tell you, forget about the sea freight, go for the air freight. Um, maybe just to, <laughs> uh, because we have some other questions. I think it's a very, it's a valid question, but I think there are also some people from, from CMA around. So um, allow me to, to divert the question a little bit. Um, I think there's a time and a place for sea freight, even in perishables. But um, yeah, I don't know if it's, it, it will not be for everything. And it, there still will be a big need. So let us focus in the meantime on improving that process and then let the maritime people do their thing. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for the swift answer about uh, sea freight and uh, air freight. I think you don't want it, to be rude, by the way. But I think it's a valid question, but uh, it's uh, not the uh, correct forum, if I may say so. Anyway, uh, my question uh, still uh, on matters uh, collaboration. I'm looking at how can we now move uh, both qualitatively and uh, quantitatively in terms of uh, relationships in this sense. Um, and this is a uh, two Swiss word. Have you explored the avenue of creating a new flower corridor into Brussels so that we demystify Amsterdam as the only market where flowers from this region can be distributed? But we over collaborate in a simple way because you are both uh, uh, Siva Fresh and Siva Pharma. We know Brussels is a hub of pharmaceuticals and the we had earlier in the other panel that indeed southbound freight is very important and necessary for the uh, economics of balancing uh, uh, the business that is air freight. You need northbound and you need southbound. But while we push flowers up, we should have pharmaceuticals coming back uh, to JKIA for all destinations within the region so that we can have Swissport as a distribution center in Eastern Central Africa for the farmer that is handled majorly by Brussels and we all know Brussels as a one hub uh, that pharmaceutical companies look into, into supplying, because you are already a uh, Siva Pharma and uh, Siva Fresh. What collaborative efforts is Swissport looking at so that we can capitalize on that channel? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bwana, for the question. I think also, again, very good question. I did mention around the flower corridor that we have been piloting. And the whole idea about Palotin was to see, does it work? And uh, we've done this for the last um, five months. And I must say, yes, it does. Because in that, we've been able to see the temperatures of the flowers uh, at destination reduced by 30%. And the whole idea about the pilot program was, if it's successful, it adds value to the farmer because he's able to get a better price, or she is able to get a better price for their products. Um, the customer on the other end are happy as well, because the flower has a longer waste life. And since then it works, the idea is then to roll it out to other destinations, Brussels included. Brussels included. And the whole idea is also maybe just, as you said, we have farmer lanes. It's the same idea then create, um, creates our flower lanes as well. And it works, for this, uh, it works for this market. Indeed, your comment is right, because we need to look at the traffic both ways, not one way. Um, because at the end of the day, the airline also does benefit out of it. So yes, it's something that we would be looking out and happy to be already working with Swissport Liege as well as Swiss Bolt, uh, Brussels, around rolling out this flower corridor uh, on the other side. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name is Benta, 
Uh, I just wanted to ask about uh, one of the pain points of a grower is um, uh, having a, uh, a slot, let's say a slot in the airline or something, just to be able to transport their staffs. But now you find, uh, I know several growers who have been having problems like they ship products to the airport, they take two, three days be before they can leave so that they go to the destinations. But a point comes here by, you're talking about collaboration. Can this form some kind of a, a lasting collaboration whereby whether these growers are on season or off season, they have got a surety that their products will always have a slot to be shipped in time and uh, at the best uh, quality preferred for them. Thank you. I think it's, it's, a, it's a very good question. I don't know, again, if we can answer it today, but um, let me briefly react on it. Um, I think there it's, it's forming that, that body that can govern something like that. Will it be a guarantee? Maybe not, but at least if you have all these parties together and you have the trucking company, you have the ground handling and the airline, maybe they will not be able to promise certain things, but at least they will be able to give you insight in why things are happening and you can react better or you can adapt better, or maybe they can guarantee you and that would be even better. So I think um, the idea of, of forming a collaboration across the board from, from, from farm until the airline leaves or the airplane leaves and then it, we gladly take it over at our end uh, to collaborate. Um, that I think could be a solution to your, uh, to your question and maybe our panelists want to add something more to that? I, I just want to add what we said earlier. Understanding the value chain and who are the stakeholders that are involved is going to be critical and the information that they have because that then allows you to plan downstream. Uh, we uh, we are in the space where we keep telling um, uh, a number of growers, for example, please do not plant because it rained. Because that way you'll end up with a product and you do not know where to take it. You need to understand the market. Like I've said, there is market issues and then there is the processing, transport and the rest. So you need to understand the value chain so that you know when to interface and how. Because that way you'll know when to take your product to the market. And even when you are growing, you know where it is going or who you link to to do the work for you. Otherwise, if you just have the product and you want to get space, it's difficult. And uh, maybe you can add. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I like this. <laughs> I, I hope you are done. <laughs> um, so just a quickly reacting to that, I think the whole idea around the cargo community is to bring your pain point and that becomes one of the issues that needs to be resolved. And it gives everyone, the farmers, the airlines, the ground handlers, everyone in that chain a voice. And we're able to lobby at different levels with one voice. So that's a, probably that's how then to approach it. Yes, that's a very, very strong answer. Mathieu, you, you yeah. want to add something to it? Uh, well, maybe yes. Um, in terms of not let's not reinvent the wheel, um, I think we should look at yeah across the borders of course, but maybe to conclude it in a sort of lane validation as we know it intensively uh, from the pharma CIV uh, product. It's something which involves all stakeholders. Um, everybody gets transparency, and there's a document. There's everything being yeah gathered in in one file, so everybody knows what's happening at the shipper, what's happening at the final end, what's happening in between, what the expectations are, and even maybe translate it into SLAs on percentages that we need to respect. I think that's the way forward and the thing we need to do in order to come back to this question. Okay, thank Matthew. Um, I see we ran out of time, but I lost question and then we'll conclude. Thank you. And um, first of all, guys, thank you for the very insightful answers and conversation today. My question is, so we've talked about collaboration, but what does collaboration specifically mean to you? So we've got a lot of um, underutilized resources globally, but even more so in the cargo industry. So you guys specifically individually also have your underutilized resources. As part of collaboration efforts, how are you dealing with those underutilized resources and would you be willing to give people access to these resources? 
So for instance, um, her last question was about um, flower farming and how sometimes growers cannot get space, but then there's sometimes where Swiss ports warehouses are more empty than usual. So um, how do you deal with that um, imbalance and would you be willing to take on other players to help you deal with your underutilized resources? This is for everyone, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's quite um, interesting. So through collaborations, as you said, um, it will then um, address our pain points, as you did uh, rightfully say. I think if, um, if I look at the Nairobi market, and in, partic in particular Nairobi, we have six warehouses. And um, probably at 30% um, in terms of capacity or thereabouts. Uh, because um, KAA did give the statistics. We are looking at 360,000 tons a year with a capacity of about 1.3 million. So that tells you the risk capacity. And we would want to grow. So we would um, walk this journey with everyone around. The airlines is important. The government of Kenya, to be precise, the Ministry of Transport is important into this agenda, talking about capacity, Kenya civil aviation is important. So all the parties involved in this are quite important around then how do we then, um, all of us, and I'm just, just talking about Swiss port only, but I can imagine even the farmer, the farmer would want to have more flowers, isn't it? Yeah. Be, uh, not just grow flowers because it has rained, but in terms of production, they would want higher production to be able to export more. But you see they are constrained as well. So that's what then their pain point is. So it's something that we, all of us, need to put our heads together, talk about our pain points in a very, very transparent way, not point at each other or scared of each other. Okay, fine, you'll steal my business or you know, uh, this is going to happen. At the end of the day, we have to have a big picture. What do we really, really want around um, this whole cargo community? I think it's to get a win-win solution for all the stakeholders. And that would take quite a bit of discussions, a lot of um, collaboration, cooperations, and ownership. Just quoting. All right. Final statements on that, or are we? OK. OK. I will give the last word. Maybe Go. just to add on, um, because it's a very interesting question. Um, of course, perishable flowers, it's uh, season related as well. So in terms of capacity, there's an enormous fluctuation. What we have done is um, we got into the market into um, local forwarders and even to smaller forwarders to see in lower season times that they can use our facilities for other purposes. Meaning, for example, that they come over, perform deconsolidation directly in our warehouse instead of in other warehouses. Um, we, for example, had some projects in the past with Benny where we could consolidate uh, some parties in, in terms of, of trucking, meaning that the warehouse get a certain period of the year a, a more cross-docking uh, purpose. So, yeah, we try looking at the entire year to fulfill and complete uh, our warehouses to reach our maximum capacity by helping even the industry and reaching a hand to even medium or smaller players who are looking for the adequate infrastructure according and in line with the IATA, CIV, uh, perishable label and so on. So uh, that's how we look at it, yeah. All right, thank you, Mathieu. I have the feeling that we con continue <laughs> this conversation and, and that's great for, for many more hours. And please do, maybe not on stage, but please do in the coffee break, during lunch, uh, wherever, even afterwards. Um, let this be a start. I think this is one of the first times that we engaged in this way. I think we made the right decision to do so. It was very, very interesting. And, and um, um, yeah, I, I have some takeaways like five takeaways I want to share with you before we go to lunch. First of all, I learned talk is not the same as communication, and that's, I think, an important one. I also love the fact global experience translated to a local process, to a local level. I think that goes for Swissport, but actually we can all apply that to what we do. We can, we can all take small steps uh, in a big process. I think that translated very well to the, also the fact of taking ownership. Sometimes it can feel like I'm just this person or this 
uh, entity in the whole chain, what will I do, what will I change? Like you can change a lot by just starting, doing it, uh, taking those small steps and taking ownership and not looking at other people to solve your issues. Um, I think also eliminating waste uh, is the easiest by just preventing it and by a good process, by collaboration, by digitization, it can be uh, prevented. Uh, and lastly, I just want to refer back to the very beginning of this session is the e -phyto. I can't stress it enough. If you still have questions about it, if you're still like, I am not sure why I should use it or why I should make sure that my customs agent or my broker or my forwarder uses it, uses it and make sure that it's filed digitally, like ask those questions, please do, because it's so important. It can make a whole difference at destination and it will make your process and your life so much easier by just enforcing or like make, just making sure it's, it's used. Um, and maybe one more thing, again, I think the idea of setting up a collaborative organ, airport, forwarders, for, uh, growers, maybe also the associations that are already there and that already group a lot of these growers, like talk to each other, get together, and if there's anything that we can do for you as, as, as Brussels Airport or as Air Cargo Belgium, please do uh, ask. Uh, we are more than willing to share our experience and, and like help you establishing the same. So thank you very much.